All praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the true sincere brethren around the four corners, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with the word and the water to Yahweh Shai, because without him, none of this would even be possible. All right. So this lesson's pretty much going to be about you women. Now, the reason why the majority of you women are the way you are is because of one key word. When it boils down to it, it's about pride. You women are very prideful. But then you'll say, oh, hold on. You men are prideful too. What about you men? Because that's the first thing women do. When you expose a woman about what she does or what they do, a lot of times, the majority of the time, what women do is they'll try to flip the table around and say, well, so do you men. You men do it too. Yes, there are wicked men out there. And if you think about it, the majority of the time, we're getting on men. But you women are not getting a pass. All right? Here's Jeremiah 31 and 22. How long will God go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. So that prophecy is being fulfilled right now. Women are compassing men in many different ways. You have women making more money in their job. You have women getting hired easier than men because of their beauty. You have women committing adultery doing all sorts of evil to their husband and then at the end of it all when they separate she still gets all the benefits while he suffers he may be crying you know but she's over here parlaying shaking her ass at the club because we're in a time in history where the Lord has uh, put these women over us but really the reason why he put women over us is based off of our sin okay so I'm gonna uh, jump back to this verse again how long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Okay, so you're doing things ass backwards. All right? You're not supposed to be over a man. But honest and truly, the reason why, why you are over men today is because our nation sinned. And the Heavenly Father put you over men, not because he changed his mind and decided to make you women over the men, but... To, to show our people the reason why wickedness should not reign dominion. The, the importance of righteousness. Because with you women being in power, everything is out of order. It's so strange because, you know, women, they'll walk around in public with their breasts hanging out, have their ass hanging out. And then if some guy is staring at them, he's considered thirsty. Or... <laughs> He's considered to be a pervert or a dog. But if it's some cute guy or some guy that she finds attractive, then all of a sudden it's okay for a man to look. The thing about women is they like to pick and choose. You know, oftentimes before a woman walks out the door, she'll be looking in the mirror, you know, lift her breasts up, turn around, stare at her ass, make sure everything's looking good. Then she'll go to work or go to the grocery store or wherever she may be going with the intentions of looking good. And then women will say, oh, it's not for men. It's for me. No, it is for men. Okay. But women are not the type of creatures to take responsibility. But because the Heavenly Father put them over us to punish us, they have become really prideful. They really have the mind frame that they don't need us. They don't need us whatsoever. All right. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? So when you're backsliding, you're pretty much heathenistic. You're living as the Gentiles. You're not going according to what the scriptures say. You're doing what you want to do. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth, a woman shall compass a man. So the Lord did that. The Lord put you over the man. And the reason why he did that is to punish the men. All right? 
But the time is going to come where the Lord is going to put things back in its proper order. So you women are living a fairy tale life. All this talk about women's liberation, how important women are, which you are important when you're in the right order that the Lord created you to be in. Okay? But all these things given to women are given to you from men, but then you'll bash men. Women, you, you women are being deceived. Okay? <clears throat> Let's jump forward to another scripture. This is Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 10 and 12. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin and he that hath it shall pour out abomination and therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So pride is the beginning of when somebody separates from the Lord. It's the beginning of sin. Scriptures also tell you that woman was the beginning of sin and through her we all die. Now what was the reason that Eve listened to the serpent? It goes back to pride. It was a prideful thing of her to go against what the Lord told them to do and what not to do. She took it upon her own self to listen to the serpent because of her pride. And when you're prideful, when you're haughty, you're in the spirit of, you can't tell me nothing. I don't need to listen to you. You don't like feeling um, one-upped by somebody else. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God, and the Lord hates prideful people. Now, women, they have millions and millions of excuses. I call it the never-ending rope of excuses. A woman can just pull that rope and pull that rope, and it never ends with things that they can come up with on excuses. But then again, they'll say this, well, you men do too. <laughs> That's what women do. You men do too. What about y'all? Let's focus on you right now. This topic is about you women, okay? Because a lot of the times, like I say, we get on men too, all right? But a lot of these men have been messed up because of who's raising them at home? Mama. Why is mama raising them at home? Because mama kicked daddy out the house, and it wasn't over a justified reason. Maybe daddy had another woman on the side. You kick him out. Maybe daddy, baby daddy, he was, uh, he, he was a little short on, on funds. He didn't, he didn't have the greatest paying job. So you put him out there. Because you're prideful. I mean, these things happen. And then you get mad at your children because your children favor your baby daddy. Anyway. The beginning of pride is when one departed from God and his heart is turned away from his maker. So it's showing that the majority of you women, you have no doings with Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. You're too prideful, okay? And it's showing you right here, you depart away from the Lord if that's your mind frame. You do have women in the midst here and there who can, you know, humble themselves to their husbands. But even then, you have women who make excuses and they'll say, well, I'm not married. I don't need to bow down to no man or I don't need to humble myself to no man. Where is that in the scriptures? Yeah, you're supposed to submit yourself to your husband. But either way it goes, you're always under a man until you get with a husband. So if you don't have a husband, you're still under your father. If you don't have a father, you're under the next man closest to you, whether it be a uh, uncle, okay, whether it be a older brother. You're always going to be under some kind of man. But women don't like that because of their pride, okay? For pride is the beginning of sin, and so is woman. Eve was the beginning of sin, because of her we all die. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination, because pride is an abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. And that's about to happen. Okay? That's going to happen again. The Lord is always bringing our people down because of the sins that we've done. 
You know, and pride being one of those sins. Pride is an abomination. The Lord hates pride, man. So you women, although you're giving the world right now, you know, your beauty can allow you to deceive men. A lot of these men are able to um, be manipulated by your games. Because it says in the scriptures how a woman is the glory of man. You women use that to your advantage on wickedness. Okay? But you women, you get offended when we tell you judgment's coming. You get you get highly offended by it. What are we supposed to say to you? You know? Uh, uh, hey, baby. Uh, hey, beautiful. If you don't get right, the Lord's going to destroy you. <laughs> no matter how we put it to you, you women, you have a problem with the gospel. All right? And the Lord is going to kill a lot of women. All right? Let's push forward into the good word. Because when it comes down, as I've stated, the, the, main priori, the, the main primary problem with women is pride. They're very egotistical. Whether it's because of how their mothers raised them, how daddy raised them. You know, you even have daddies raising these women talking about, uh, don't let no man tell you that hey, you can't do this and you can't do that. You know, be a strong woman. So you have a lot of women who've been deceived because of a man as well. Okay? Not just mama at home. This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 26 and 24. A dishonest woman contemneth shame. But a honest, or excuse me, a dishonest woman contemneth shame. But a honest woman will reverence her husband. And a lot of women, they're not honest, man. I mean, women lie over some of the dumbest things, man. You might be hanging out with your lady. You might be watching a movie. And you look over to her and you see she's falling asleep. You wake her up and you say, you know, if you're tired, go to the bed. I'm not falling asleep. I just saw you falling asleep. No, I'm not. That's what women do, man, like. Women are very dishonest creatures over some of the dumbest things, man. Women lie when they don't even have to sometimes. But to be dishonest, all right, really you're just bringing shame. A, den a dishonest woman contemneth shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, and a female dog is a bitch. Okay, now people have a problem when certain women get called bitches based off of how they act, based off of their shamelessness. But America has raised you into a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> it's more so how you say things than what you say. If you call a woman a dog, hey, what's up, dog? She's not going to be offended as much as, hey, what's up, bitch? Just like if you call... Um, let me get another example. Um, it just, it just escaped my thoughts. It escaped my thoughts right now. But pretty much when it comes to certain words that are synonymous from another word, people get offended. It doesn't make sense. Okay? But, if I use the word condemned... You're not going to look at me ill, but if I say the word damn, you're going to look at me like, oh, you, you just said a curse word. But I just said the same thing, but just used differently in different, different words, but the same context, synonymous of each other. All right. So people are very sensitive. OK, so the scriptures tell you how women, a shameless woman is called a bitch. And a shameless woman is a bitch. And there's many shameless women walking around. But you know what, brothers? Don't let these women get you all down and out, man. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We're at the end of it all, and we have to remember it was the Heavenly Father that set these women up for the time being. But you know what? This being Esau's kingdom, let them have it. <laughs> let these beaches have it. Let them have a ball, man, because we're going to receive a glorious kingdom. In fact, the Lord's going to uh, give us uh, beautiful things even before the kingdom. You're going to have women chasing you on this side, man. Before the kingdom of heaven is even set up on earth. The same woman or the same women who wouldn't even think twice about you. They're going to be dreaming about you, man. 
fantasizing about you. They're going to be trying to ravish you. They're going to try to rape you, man. All right? So let these women have it. All right? They want to be shameless and, and prideful. So be it. Sirach 26 and 26. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. And for a woman to honor her husband, she would have to be humble. Women do not like that. Women are not fans of humility. <laughs> a woman is not a fan of humility. Hell, you can even be a man and you can be humble about yourself. You might turn a woman off. She might think you insecure. Like, oh, he ain't my type. I need a man who's more confident. No, you want a man who's prideful. Because you're prideful as well. For a lot of you. Okay? A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. But she that but she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. So a lot of you women, here's the thing. The reason why you dishonor your husband is because of your pride. Scriptures just said it here in Ecclesiasticus or Sirach 26 and 26. For you women who have a problem treating your man with the respect that he's supposed to get, it's because of your pride. You think you're something when you're nothing. You think because you have different men out there who'll be willing to, to spend money to get with you, who tell you how pretty you are, you think you're somebody because of that? You're deceived because you have a fat, ugly, blob type woman who look like precious who can get men. Okay, because a lot of these men, they go for, for women because they want the box, man. Women think, oh, I, I can get this man, that man, this man. I'm special. No, baby. <laughs> You're not special. Okay, you don't understand the game. Why do you think there, there was something known as spitting game? Because women like games. You have to play games to get with them. Men play games with you women. Because you women, you don't like honesty. You're very dishonest. So when a man's honest with you, you get offended by it. So a man has to lie to you. You set that up yourself. You're a liar. You'll tell a man, oh, you're not my type. You're you're ugly. Ugh. You, you will talk to him. Ugh. He's ugh. But then you got all this makeup on. So it's just like women. A lot of women are shameless. They're really practically not women. They're, they're bitches. Okay? Because a lot of these women are just, they are um, easy to manipulate and they're also very manipulative. Manipulative. <laughs> a woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. Hardly see that. Let her husband go get another woman and see what she does. I don't give a damn if she cooks three meals a day. She keeps the house clean. I don't care. Go get another woman. It's lawful. It doesn't mean as a man you got to have another woman. But let's say you're a man and you decide you wanted another woman. Let's see if she's going to humble herself. Or if she's going to bring out the scorpion. Alright. <laughs> but she that dishonoreth him in her pride. Okay. You women are prideful. That's why you dishonor your husband. That's why you dishonor men. Pride. <laughs> Shall be counted ungodly of all. That's why the scriptures tell you that pride is when one departs from God. So a woman in her pride, she's, she's the most ungodly woman of all women. You have women who may not believe this truth, but they humble themselves down to their man at home and the Lord may deliver them. Okay? But you know, like I say, women always use that. What about men? What about you? <laughs> this ain't about us. All right? This lesson is about y'all's asses. Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. Because, you know, really the, 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 the way that women treat us now, it's really just a curse, man. Okay? Deuteronomy 28, and let's start at 
I'm going to read 56, Deuteronomy 28 and 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, because believe it or not, the so-called African-American woman, the so-called uh, West Indian woman, the so-called Mexican woman, the so-called Colombian woman, okay, the, the, the so-called Puerto Rican woman, at one time they actually were considered delicate. Women are not delicate no more. Women used to be soft-spoken. They used to be uh, humble. They were still wicked, <laughs> don't get me wrong, but, you know, the women today, which are not women, are nothing like the women of old. See, women think being a strong woman is to not let a man rule over you. No, 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 no. That's not a strong woman. Women think a strong woman is an emotional wreck. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not a strong woman. A strong woman is going to do what the Heavenly Father through His Son wants her to do. That's strong. To be able to humble yourself, even when your husband uh, may be going off, he may be wrong on something, but you still humble yourself because you know that's your husband. Okay? That's a strong woman. A woman who can take care of the house, guide the children, raise the children in righteousness, and still be able to please your man. That's strong. Working two or three jobs, that's not a strong woman. That's not. It's, it's, that's really not a strong woman. Many people are doing that today. But how many women have it in them to humble down, to let go of that pride? You're not strong enough to do that because you're weak for the majority of you. Okay, let me be the first to say it. You're a weak-ass woman. There's nothing strong about an emotional roller coaster. There's nothing strong about a woman who's jealous of another woman. Anyone who just reacts off of emotion, there's nothing strong about you. That's why the scripture calls you the weaker vessel. Okay? Just because there's women out there who could throw a football, there's women out there who may be stronger than some men. Biologically, they're still women. And they still got to reverence their husband. I don't give a damn if you're a man, you're, you're 115 pounds and you look like a toothpick and your wife is a bodybuilder and she can lift up three of you. She's still supposed to humble her ass down and serve you as her Lord. You, these women are not going to do that. Okay? They're not. A woman will only go so far. Okay? A woman's going to do what she wants to do. Because they've been liberated by Esau, so-called white man, the goddamn devil. All right? Now, let's read forward. The tender and delicate woman among you, which will not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness. Hell, women were, were, were on a level so high at one time, they may even be carried. They might pull up, you know, in a, in a horse and chariot wagon. And, you know, her servants might come and pick her up and she might not even have to walk to go inside of her palace or her home, wherever she may be living. Because women back then, they, they were considered to be delicate, the weaker vessel. That's part of respecting your woman as the weaker vessel is seeing her as being delicate. These women are not delicate. A woman will stab you in your neck because you raised your voice at her. Or because you had another woman, a woman will stab you literally in the neck with a knife. And watch you bleed out. Okay? And then call 911 crying, talking about you don't know what happened. You walked in the kitchen and your husband had a knife in his neck. <laughs> you women are not delicate no more. You know, long story short, you women are wicked as hell, man. And, you know, when you really dwell on the wickedness of women, it can really make you mad. But the kingdom of heaven is at hand, brothers. Like, Man, this stuff is so close, man. You could you could feel it in your bones, man. At one time, you know, things like this, you you would you dwell on it, it just make you just ah make you want to turn to a super saiyan and you just spontaneous blow up everything around you. But then you you just get in that spirit and you just know like 
The Heavenly Father did this to us. The Heavenly Father put the, the curse on these women to be like that for our punishment. We deserve it. And when you take away pride, you're able to accept the fact we deserve what we get from these wicked ass women. We do. We really do. Just as much as I'm saying you women are wicked as hell, us men from our wickedness, we deserve it. But you women will be punished for that shit though. You're not going to get off the hook. Okay, just because the Lord puts you above us, don't think for a second that the Lord just changed his laws and said, ah, well, at one time I wanted the man to be over Eve. I wanted Adam to be over Eve, but nah, I was making a mistake. No, the Heavenly Father is not in the heavens asking his wife like, hey, baby, before I bring judgment, what do you think, honey? The Heavenly Father don't need no woman. Yahweh Shai don't need no woman. We don't need no woman. But guess what? You women play an important role when you're in order. Okay? You do. But when you're out of order, you're, you're like a pop machine. What's going to happen when you put money in a pop machine that's out of order? You're going to lose your money. Okay? When, you, when you're dealing with a money who's out of order, when, when you're dealing with a woman who's out of order, you're going to lose your mind. All right? Deal with a machine that's out of order, you're going to lose your money. Long story short. So these women are not delicate no more. They, they look at us with an evil eye, man. They look at our children with an evil eye. They hate us, man. They, they really hate us. But you can thank Esau for that. But hey, it all goes back to the curses. The curse that the Lord put on our women to get, a, to get at us for our sins, man. All right, because we, we sinned over and over again. But this is the last captivity. There's going to be a time where these women are literally going to serve us, man. They're literally going to be on their hands and knees, man. That same woman that's saying, never, ugh, I can never bow down to no man. Ugh, not me. You got me messed up, nigga. That same woman going to be on her hands and knees serving you, bro. Serving us, man. We going to have these women in check in order the way they're supposed to be. Let these women have this kingdom, these wicked ass women. And for you women who are in order, all right, you, you try your best. You try to humble yourself. The Lord going, he going to uh, uh, bless you, okay? Just keep the faith, you know? And for you women who don't have a man, don't think in your mind that, well, since I don't have a husband, I don't really need to answer to no man. No, you need to be under somebody. Damn it. <laughs> okay? <clears throat> Let me not prolong. You know, yeah, the, these women, man, they have a, a wicked eye towards their husbands, man. They, they don't love us no more. <laughs> they don't love us no more. All right, this is uh, Sirach. 13 and 20. As the proud hate humility, so doth the rich abhor the poor. Women hate humility. They're so prideful. So prideful, they hate it. When, you're, when, when, when you talk about humility, they, they can't stand it. You know, for a woman to see another woman serving a man to her, it's like, uh-uh, not me, not this bitch. <laughs> you know, you know the nigga woman, you know, the, the nigga woman will, will see another woman doing something righteous and she'll just totally bug out, just totally get wicked, man. You know, a woman might allow her man to have another woman and then a woman on the side who's single, she trip and talk about, not, not me. Hey, you got to have fun with this thing, man, because, hey, we, we dealing with demons every day. You know, we deal with things that, 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 that can really just make the average person, if they were in the spirit we were in, just lose it, man. They would lose it. But, you know, the spirit of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai gives you that, that patience as you grow in this truth. You know, you know, one thing I've learned in this truth, you know, sometimes even when a person don't know what they're talking about, just, just let them talk. Give them a little second to, to cut themselves and then it didn't speak because, you know, many of us, we're just so quick because we know we just cut somebody off. But we got to be patient, even when dealing with these wicked ass women. We got we got to use patience, man, because these, these women, they don't know nothing, man. They're senseless. You know, they're, they're truly senseless. We're going to receive a glorious kingdom and these women, they're going to bow down. And we're not going to have that one song by Ice Cube playing talking about bow down when I, when I come to your town. 
But these, these women are going to bow down, you know? Um, where was I at? Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, 13 and 20. As the proud hate humility, and you women are very proud, that's why you're not going to humble yourselves, okay? So doth the rich abhor the poor. So just as a rich man abhors the poor, the proud abhor humility, and you women are proud. In fact, that's, that's the main cause of why women don't honor men. They don't honor their husbands is because of their pride. Okay, so what does Wisdom of Solomon say? It asks a question about pride. Let's get into that. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 8. What hath pride profited us? Or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? So what hath pride done to you, nigga woman? Because you make more money than your husband or you make more money than a lot of men. You might have been so-called cheated on by every man you've ever been with. Now you you just hate men. You know, you just say, I'm just going to turn lesbian. I'm, I'm so done with men. Oh, my God. I can't stand men. So when women get like that. They're totally just bugged out. But it's pride because they really feel like they so much better than us, man. Did you women know? Here's a scientific fact. Did you women know that at one time you were just a little tiny sperm cell swimming inside of a man's balls? <laughs> okay. And that man literally had to inject you into a woman before you could exist. He could have easily aborted you, you know, in a condom. He could have aborted you in a napkin. You could have aborted you in your mother's mouth, but you women have the audacity to disrespect men and say, well, you don't you don't hold the baby for 10 months. Bitch, we hold the baby in our balls. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like this world really makes it seem like being a man is just you're insignificant. You're not important. Everything's the woman, the woman, the woman. You know, how many women commit adultery. And then the man, he's just left crying and boohooing. And everybody tells him to get over it. But this little bitch is at the club parlaying. Dude's asking for a number. She's just having a good time. Getting drunk. You know? Welcome to Babylon, man. This place is fucked up. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 8. What hath pride profited us? What hath pride profited you, nigga woman? Did you know that because of pride, you're cursed? What hath pride profited you, man? But you're still prideful. You're so prideful that even when we show you how wicked pride is and the, the curse that came from you being prideful, you're still going to be prideful. That's the mind of these women. They do what the fuck they want. Until the Heavenly Father brings that judgment, they're going to do what the hell they want to do, man. Okay? And if a woman's cooking and cleaning and doing certain things for you, it's only because she feels like it. At any damn given time, Satan jump on her and she just totally bug out, man. Okay? These women ain't right. You niggas ain't right either because you, you love it, man. You love that these women are bugged the hell out, man. You niggas promote it in your music and everything. So to hell with you niggas. Alright? I'm not biased. Just because I'm a man, I get on men too. To hell with any nigga out there. Promoting a wicked ass bitch like she's where it's at. Talking about fucking another man's wife and all these different things. Death to you, man. And your fucking family, man. Okay? What hath pride profited us or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? And you got niggas do that. They, they vaunt about their riches all day long in their music. Bitches vaunt all day long about their riches and their music, especially Israelite women and men, men and women, okay? But it ain't got you nowhere. The only thing that pride has got you, women, is a bunch of curses, okay? <clears throat> and I'm sure you brothers who are watching this, you know what I'm about to pull out. I'm about to pull out that one-two uppercut on these hoes. <laughs> this is uh, Isaiah 3 and 16. Moreover, the Lord saith, 
because the daughters of Zion are haughty, which is another way of saying prideful. So because the women of Israel have pride and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, because you women constantly looking at other men, you have no discipline when it comes to the things you lay your eyes on. You know, you might be a man, you know, you might be riding in your woman in a passenger seat and she, she, she see a man pull up next to her. She, you know, just kind of glancing, acting like she ain't looking. He might pull up on, you know, a, a nice looking car, a car nicer than yours. She, she kind of glancing, acting like she ain't looking. She can't control her eyes, man. Lusting after another man, you know. That's what women do. Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. You know, women love attention. That's why they do the things they're doing. <laughs> I mean, it's really not the attention that's a bad thing. It's how they go about getting their attention. Women go about getting their attention by random men all day long. But then they get mad when the wrong man shows her attention with the woman it has to be the right guy that she's looking for to give her attention although she puts it out there for the, for the whole world to see okay the right man come along want to get with her she diss him but the worst of the worst nigga come along he get her and then dogs her out then she mad oh, i'm done with man might as well just be a lesbian Ugh. <laughs> like what women women are they're nuts, man. Women are, are fucking nuts. Oh, majority. All right? Majority of women are nuts. Oh, speaking of women being nuts, going back to the man. Everybody started off as a nut, all right? And it came from the man. Isaiah 3 and 16. Matter of fact, let's jump down for the sake of time. Isaiah 3 and 24. And it came to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And you got prideful women out there. They'll be all up in your face trying to dog you out. All right. And their little cooter bear smells like a damn sewer. All right. You even have women. They go to these strip clubs to work. And you got men, you know, just got their face all up between a woman's legs. And he thinking it's fresh. And the woman, she keeps wipes on her. Every every 30 minutes, she has to grab some wipes and, and wipe between her legs because she got older problems, man. Or, or a woman being a harlot, having three, four, five, six different niggas a day, and you thinking it's fresh. You down there snacking between the legs, you know, not to get vulgar, but she using wipes to keep her, to keep her little uh, pit of death from smelling rotten, man. That's a curse from the Lord. And a lot of women, they don't really bathe the right way. They don't they don't bathe properly because they like to shower most of the time. Women typically should be taking baths. There's nothing wrong with showering as long as you're taking baths as well. But women, they'll shower and won't even bathe in, in the bathtub. They won't let their, their vaginal area soak in the water. All right? And it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a girdle, a rent. And instead of well-set hair baldness. And instead of a, a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. And burning instead of beauty. So with all them curses put on you women. You know, from being in shape, now your stomachs is hanging out. From being pretty, now you're ugly. From your, your, your vagina smelling clean, now it smells mean. You know? You still don't care. <laughs> you know, the, the Heavenly Father took your hair and you like, you know what? I'm going to just buy a weave and pretend like it's my hair. And then, you know, rub your fingers through your hair like it's yours and then tell it, I don't need you, nigga. It's crazy, man. What are you women going to do when Esau starts chasing after you and, and you lose your wig? It's going to be crazy, man. I, mean, I couldn't even imagine how many hair weaves and wigs you're going to see out here on these streets, man, when all hell breaks loose from a bunch of prideful demons. And I'm speaking more so to the southern kingdom because when you, when you read Isaiah 3, 
This is speaking of the southern kingdom because the, the northern kingdom was already took into uh, a captivity. So this was speaking to the southern kingdom. But nevertheless, all you Israelite women of all the tribes are, are proud. Okay? So let's move on. Let's keep the spirit rolling. Because this is coming back. <clears throat> Judgment is coming in a, in a very high number, man. Pull out a couple more scriptures and I'll close this lesson out. Ezekiel 9 and 4, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And the elect men, we sigh and we cry, we complain about the wickedness that's being done. Even the pride and, and, and wicked ways of you women, we complain about it. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. So maids and women, that's women twice. Women are going to start getting put to death out here. All right. For the sake of my camera dying soon, I'm trying to read a little quicker. Okay. But women are going to start getting put to death out here. Okay. Judgment is coming. Just like it happened back then, that angel was killing so many Israelites. All right. It got to the point where Ezekiel was thinking, like, he going to kill everybody? You know, the heavenly father had to calm that angel down. Like, okay, that, that's enough. Because if the, if the heavenly father didn't say nothing, that angel would have just slaughtered every damn thing, man. All right. But that's going to come again where people start dying in, in really, really big numbers. <laughs> okay. You're going you're gonna to see the wrath of my, my Lord power. Okay. Slay utterly old and young. So it don't matter if you a little baby. It don't matter if you old and can't move. You look like a raisin. Okay. Both maids and little children and women. So children and women are going to die. In America, women and children, they get it passed. Uh-uh. Not in the eyes of the Lord. If the Lord ain't with you, you're done for. All you women out there being prideful, not only are you putting yourself in danger, you're putting your children in danger. If you don't have a man of the Lord, you're putting your children in danger. For real. All right. People are going to start dying out here, man, in and, and huge numbers. Okay? And women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. And that also goes for, for women and children as well. You have uh, men, but you also have women and children who have the mark of the Most High, which is making you uh, uh, void of catching the Lord's judgment. It's pretty much protecting you. Unlike the mark of the beast, you take the mark of Satan, you're going to be destroyed. You take the mark of the Heavenly Father, you're going to be delivered. All right? So before I close out, let's close out with this, man. Because you women, for far too long, <laughs> man, just wicked as hell. All right? I believe it's in Second Chronicles 15 and 13. In fact, let's start at 10. 2 Chronicles 15 and 10. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the 15th year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their soul, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death whether small or great, whether man or woman. You prideful ass women have nothing to do with the Most High. So if you want to keep going down that route of being prideful, disrespecting your men, disrespecting men in general, thinking that women are to be exalted over men, be deceived. Be my guest. Listen to the serpent. That's fine. But you're going to die. Hold on. Let me, let me talk to you women the appropriate way. If you don't turn to the Lord, beautiful, the Lord is going to kill you. He's going to fuck you up. Okay? And, and, and seriously, you know, all, all jokes to the side, man. The, the Lord is, he's angry with you women. Let's face it. You women have done us wrong for so many years. It's ridiculous, man. You just totally just shit on the Israelite man every chance that you can get. 
Okay? Every chance that you get, you just shit on the Israelite man. You're a bunch of assholes, man. Let's just face it. You women are fucked up. All right? There's, there's no wrath above the wrath of the enemy. And the scriptures tell you how the woman is our enemy. You women better repent. Okay? And, and, and get yourself together. Humble your damn selves, man. Quit thinking you somebody when you really just a person. You bleed every goddamn month. All right? If you're at, if you're at a young a, a young enough age, you still bleeding. What what the hell is special about you? Okay? You got to bathe just to keep your hygiene up. What's so special about you, man? You got to brush your teeth every day. What what's so special about you? All right? The man makes the nation. Okay? And we we ourselves or to even be humble and we're over you. I mean, let's just let's just let's just smell the coffee. Let let's smell the folders in the cup here. The man was put over you women and even us are required to be humble. How much more you women who are considered the weaker vessel who were put under the men? Not because you're insignificant, but damn it, that's the order. Okay? So I'm not going to make this lesson too much longer. You women get your shit together, man. For real, cause time time is is about up. For real, like it's it's done. You women about to get ate the hell up, man. If you don't get yourself right, okay. So with that, all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the true sincere brethren around the four corners, pushing out this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with the word and the water to Yahweh Shai. Because without him, none of this would even be possible. Shalom.